Hi everyone, Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to another card making video. So today we're going to be looking at the newest issue of Die Cutting Essentials. This is issue 70 and we've got a Shine Bright 5 piece panel die set. So I will sort of take this apart and show you exactly what comes included with this free gift. Um, but let's take a look in the magazine itself at just some of the inspiration. The samples that they've got in the magazine are really fantastic as always they've got die cutting hit, hints and tips um, showing you how you can sort of snip bits apart um, so you don't have to just use this die sort of as it is so the magazine is filled with lots of examples of what you can do with this die so lots of different sort of techniques that you could do creating the different kinds of backgrounds that was a watercolor type background uh, of course you could again snip it apart just use sections of it and um, the next section in here of inspiration is showing you how to use it uh, for like Christmas decorations so using it on sort of homemade crackers um, using it on little bags sort of like tea candle um, holders there's loads and loads of different kinds of um, projects that you could use with you could turn it into a sort of stained glass um, for like an ornament to go on the Christmas tree or in the window something like that um, just loads and loads of versatility with this particular set so before we get started on our card, let's take a quick look at what uh, comes included in next month's issue. So we've got this versatile 4-in-1 die set. Um, so this has got loads of snippability. And this looks like it's something to do with snowflakes and you've got bonus sentiments downloads and digital cutting files. So if you do have a uh, maybe like a scan and cut or a cricket, something like that, looks like you'll be able to sort of download some cutting files and use it on there. I will just show you what is sort of exactly included and how things do cut with these dies. So you've got the two holly sprigs, they are just pretty standard, but this sort of main piece uh, is made up of three dies. So you've got this outer archway die, you've got this sort of inner archway, which has got this really beautiful, almost like a brick effect around the outside, and then our actual sort of main die itself. So I've just cut this out of plain white cardstock, just so you can see, again, this is exactly how it cuts. So you've got just a regular die in this archway, really versatile, you'll probably be able to use this uh, for other projects and with other sets as well. Then, again, we've got this sort of inner archway with this brick effect. So the inside does have a cutting edge, so you cut out this panel, which is the exact size for the main part, but then there isn't a cutting edge on the outside so it'll stay connected into your cardstock and the same again for this centerpiece as well this doesn't have a cutting edge around the outside but it does then die cut all of that really beautiful imagery so you could keep this connected to your cardstock if you wanted to um, or you could use a combination of the other dies and obviously die cut this all out completely so here you can see I've cut a panel using the outer archway, the inner archway. This then means it's totally disconnected from your cardstock. With then the panel that comes um, out of the middle section of that die, because it's the same size, you could use then that die to cut out your main die. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And you can see here just how you could build this up um, by sort of snipping uh, into everything, cutting everything away from your cardstock and you can sort of layer that image up. So again, hopefully that kind of made sense, but let's get into making our card today. So I've taken a piece of blank, uh, this is 300 GSM cardstock, and I've added a sheet of this double-sided adhesive to the back of it because we're going to create sort of um, an aperture card and I want this to look kind of like a stained glass window, so I want to be able to have that stickiness on the back and of course I've run that through my die cutting machine. I've then put some double-sided purple tape on the back of it because I want everything to stay in place because we're going to do some colouring before we want to take all of these pieces out. So we are going to be doing a bit of paper piece and this is the first time I've ever done something like this. I have always, you know, I've seen examples and I do think it looks really beautiful. To be honest, I don't know that I've got the patience and after this card... I'm not sure that I have the patience to kind of sit and paper piece. Um, but when I was looking through the magazine, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't, because there were such great samples in the magazine, I found it a little bit harder than what I usually do to kind of come up with an idea. So to some degree, I'm kind of making this card up as I go along. But my idea was to kind of almost do like a no-line colouring type of 
thing. Um, so you can see I'm colouring in with my tri-blend alcohol markers, but I'm not just colouring in the pieces. So to me, that's paper piecing where you then, you know, obviously put the pieces back in. Maybe you've coloured them in. I'm doing that, but I'm also colouring in then the actual dye itself. So so the piece that you know you would normally use if you weren't paper piecing, I'm actually colouring that in as well. So I'm not having that like you would a stained glass window where you have maybe that black outline or whatever colour you decide to do it. Again, so my kind of idea was that no line kind of colouring look. Um, so nothing, but I'm not even doing any shading or anything on here. Of course you could do that, but I'm just, I've just gone really, really simple here. Uh, when it came to doing the sort of holly and the, the berries and things, um, I got a little bit confusing as to sort of what was what. Um, so I did use the packaging. Just bear in mind that this does, this is the opposite image because obviously when they display the dyes on the packaging, it's the other side up. Um, but I had already die cut one that I just used that for a little bit of reference as well. So the pieces which would be sort of the outside, um, I'm going to be taking those pieces out and you're going to be able to see through that. And sort of later on, I do end up outlining all of that in black as well. But for now, like I said, just colouring in um, everything, the lines and sort of the in pieces as well. So you can see here, I'm just taking my pokey tool and I'm just pulling out all of the pieces that I've not coloured. So again, this is going to be sort of the background pieces. Um, I've been really careful to try not to, to sort of colour too much on these. You can see that I've done that black line around the edge. Again, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I wanted to see what it looked like, but sort of a little bit later, you'll see just how it looks it looks a lot better once I kind of um do the lines inside the image as well um but again like I said I was just kind of making it up as I was going along a little bit so once I had everything colored in I wanted to get this piece onto a piece of acetate so this is crafters companion acetate this is actually heat resistant acetate this is all I've got at the moment I don't have regular stuff but I'm not using any heat on this so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter um I'm just really carefully trying to pull back the so you've got the purple tape on there with that release sheet from the um, adhesive sheet we put on the back before die cutting. And I was kind of hoping they would stay where they were. This ended up being quite time consuming. Um, I was trying to keep all of the pieces because I want to leave this flat and then bring the acetate uh, to my picture. But yeah, this did end up sort of taking quite a while to get... Um, to get those pieces to stay and believe it or not this is actually double the speed of what I'm doing it and, and to me this is just really slow to watch but once we've got all of the pieces down like I said we can take the acetate to the um, die cut I did then have to fiddle around a little bit with some of the pieces that were stuck um, again it took a little while this is really isn't something that I'd be interested in sort of doing again at least for a little while um, but you can see we've got our acetate on there and next you'll be able to see that I've um, really neatened this up. Like I said, I've done the black archway. I used that middle die with the brick effect to cut this piece out. But I've also die cut another piece just in solid black. Because I'm creating an aperture card here, I want you to be able to see through it. I want it to have that sort of stained glass window effect. So for the inside of my card, um, on the back I, I don't want you to be able to see any of that uh sort of white cardstock I want it to be as neat as possible so I'm happy that you can see the sections where I've um colored onto but I didn't want you to sort of see the white bits so that is sort of the the piece that's now going to go um in, in the middle of our card so we're going to create a little bit of a sandwich and um, so I've got an A5 size card here this is top fold and we're going to create our aperture and i'm going to do that by using this this middle um die so i'm just going to line it up in the center of the card and just die cut that and then i need to create a second piece like i said i'm going to create a sandwich so i want um a piece identical to this front piece so then we can sandwich that piece of acetate in there so to make sure i get this in the right place because i want it to be the exact same size i cut a piece of cardstock down to the same size as the front and I just put it all inside and just kind of lined it up and that's worked really well. Then for getting our acetate I'm just going to pop some um, glue on the inside of our card. This is then going to stick the acetate then we're just going to put some more glue on and put our back panel on and what worked really nicely with this was the fact that that um, 
uh, centre die, our actual uh, like stained glass window die, that fits really perfectly within this because we use that die with the bricks around it to cut that piece out, it slots back in so perfectly so you don't have to worry about it going in at a weird angle or anything like that, it really fitted perfectly. So all I'm doing is literally just lining it up and that is our stained glass window, aperture card, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's that sort of section done. So the last thing I'm going to do is pop a sentiment on it. So of course this is die cut essentials, this hasn't come with any um, uh, sentiments or anything. So I'm taking these sentiments from the last issue of Creative Stampin' uh, because this was jam-packed with different sentiments. So I picked this uh, Warmest Winter Wishes sentiment, so it was nice and long, kind of just added something a little extra to the card. So you could do so much more with this card. What we've created here uh, is really, really basic. You, we could have um, we could have done a background to the front of it. We could have matte and layered our sentiment. I didn't really do anything like that, to be honest. Um, I really wanted to just keep it quite simple. I wanted it to be just sort of that stained glass window with the, the black and then the colour inside it. I wanted that to be the main focus. Um, so I didn't really feel like I had to put anything else on there. Um, but of course you can, you know, jazz them up so much more than this. This is just quite a basic um, card. But, you know, because of what we've done, it is pretty time consuming to do it, if I'm being really honest with you. But I actually really love this aperture, this like stained glass window effect. Then you can see through it, but we've still got some colour on there with all those pieces. So I'm really happy with the way that this come out. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's given you some inspiration. Um, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so so you don't miss out on any future videos. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.